Well, good Monday morning to you. Welcome to our Monday morning live edition of the Doctors Nutrition Show. I'm your host, Jim Tabor, along with Dr. Jim and Janine Fox of Doctors Nutrition, located on Cal Lorraine Road in Gulfport, just south of Pass Road. We do this every Monday, and it is a live call-in show in which we invite you to call in and ask questions regarding our topic of the day or anything regarding your health, because that's what this show is all about, helping, to, helping you to live a healthier lifestyle. Phone lines are on the screen, 896-0713 or 800-349-0713. You call in, uh, ask a question, pass it along to our producer and they'll pass it along to us. We have a habit every first Monday of the month we do what is called Open Line Monday in which you can call in and ask anything you want to, mm -hmm. any question you want to about health. Now as far as trying to uh, beat the heat, well, we <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> Not around 120 here. degree uh, heat, heat index. index is what uh, uh, Wesley just said, yep. can you believe that? Stay hydrated and don't stay outside too long. Yeah, no. stay inside if you can. Mm -hmm. No, no. As a matter of fact, there was a story about this a kid down in Florida over the weekend that uh, about his boat, that he had been stayed out in the water like 24 hours, over 24 mm -hmm. hours. And when they brought him in finally on a, a gurney, I mean, he's a young kid, but he was so burnt, so yeah. burnt. So that's another thing. Be sure you have plenty of sunscreen on. So anyway, again, our phone lines are 896-0713 or 800-349-0713. So uh, starting out, we also had a few questions that were emailed into me, and uh, one of them are off the bat. And I've used these, always have trouble because I almost drowned myself trying to, <laughs> to, yeah. try to use them. Are there any benefits to using a nasal uh, spray or I mean, not spray, but a nasal rinse like a neti pot? Oh yeah, um, a lot of people have various allergies in you know when it's this hot and dry and it's been extraordinarily dry you got a lot of dust so just cleaning out the, the nasal passages sure right. I mean it's, it's it's just a way to evacuate it or clean it out and normally you use a salt with it and salt yeah. well just like everybody knows salt water kills bacteria yeah right so if you have enough salt in it then it does yeah. kill things it's in the nasal passages whether it be bacteria even some fungal things like that so yeah. not as much on fungal but it is on bacteria but it is good to actually wash out the sinuses. Mm -hmm. If you can do it. Not everybody can. I have no. people, not everybody can do it. A lot it. of people are like you. They yeah. didn't yeah. want to Hold drown Hold that head at a certain angle and yeah. you, know, you know, drowning yourself. Yeah, so. I'm yeah. one that can't, I don't can't like do water it. up my, uh-uh. I was never a good swimmer because I couldn't put my face in the water, so I can't. <laughs> well, I love to swim. Well, I no, mean, I couldn't stand water up my nose. Yeah. So I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I think it is good for the people that can. Yeah, mm -hmm. we got a lot of people that do yeah, it. Especially mm -hmm. during springtime. Uh, my, uh, my former uh, cameraman who retired from here uh, a couple of years ago, he, he used his all the time. He yeah. swore by it. Oh yeah, a, so lot, of a lot of people do. do it daily or mm -hmm. even a few times a week, but it is, it is beneficial. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the more allergies you've got, the better it's going to The more bigger benefits you're going to get from it. Right, Yeah. and we're like the allergy capital of the world now. Oh right? yeah. yeah. I if mean, you, if you, long. you know, seriously, we have a lot of folks that move to the, to the coast because it's the coast and, you know, a lot of people say, well, okay, I want to live on, on the beach or near the beach anyhow. And they come here and then they find out that, geez, oh, Pete, I never had allergies like this. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm having all kind of allergies and stuff and yeah, guarantee you, it's uh, I don't, you know, well, yeah. there, there's well, something here you're, you're going to be allergic to. There's a strip of air and they show it's from like New Orleans to Alabama that is stagnant yeah. and it's at the very coast and so the air quality here is they usually say poor because of that yeah it's called a black triangle yeah wow yeah so it's so that's yeah. one of the reasons why allergies nothing like la no no. Oh, no our air is not because of pollution like in those right. big cities it's more about the way the jet stream goes and yeah. it stays in this area and just Everybody like that african dust there. that comes oh and yeah it, and it came a week or two ago uh, and yeah. It, if you look, it's just on the coast. It yeah. comes in that one strip. It's where it gets great, heaviest, yeah. Mm -hmm. Several, a few years ago, I got a great picture of that stuff. I was out on a boat, and the, you could see that, you that see orange see dust yeah. in yeah. the sky. It was weird, weird yeah. looking. Yeah, you have to, have to really watch that because people who have any kind of breathing problems, you know, whether it's COPD or just any, you know, asthma, whatever, they're going to have issues with this stuff. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about it. So the answer to your question is yes. Yes. It's, it's very <laughs> beneficial for you. Uh, another question. My 10-year-old has been diagnosed with ADHD. Is there anything natural he can take? Oh, sure. Um, we, yeah. we, we have a lot of uh, kids come to us and moms and dads bring their ch uh, children in. And they've got ADD, ADHD. Um, and, you know, we start with a, one of the big things we start with is, is theanine. Now, L-theanine mm -hmm. is a calmative for the brain. So it's, it, it's something that just may, helps you focus better. And if you can keep them on task, 
you know, when they're kind of paying attention to things, they're going to do better and it kind of calms that things down. And so that's, that's one that we use. We suggest going ahead and doing a lot of the other lab work to see what else is going on because if the thyroid's wrong, you know, there's a lot of and things can be wrong. we see so many kids when we do their lab work that are deficient yeah. in vitamin D, that's right. deficient in B12. B12 makes a big difference in the brain function. Huge. And like I said, there's a lot of things you can do, like he said, theanine, but taking sugar out of a kid's diet will help dramatically. Yes. I find that people, that's the least likely thing they're going to do, but it is one of the most beneficial things you can do is take sugar out of the diet. Yeah. And all your dyes, especially red dyes, things like that. So you can change diet. And at the same time, there's other things too. Now, some people, the theanine is enough, but it's very, um, the good thing is the side effects on it. I mean, there's little to nothing, nothing on theanine. Yeah. That's the good thing about theanine. So we start there. But if it isn't enough, then we'll go to something, we have something called Neurolink. And then we have things that we can start doing individually at higher doses, like the 5-HTP and the tyrosine. and phenylalanine. I mean, there's definitely things that are known to help and all those help brain chemistry. And brain chemistry is usually the problem. Wouldn't you say that um, uh, the, today's diet has a lot to do? Oh, yeah. I mean, when, when we were 10 years old, I mean, we uh, dinner time, we gathered time around ago. the table. <laughs> Don't go there, uh, Jim. Um, we sat around the dinner table at mom, night. Mom fixed a nice dinner and everything. Right. And, uh, you know, we ate good. Nowadays, I mean, with the, the fast world that we live in, it's almost like we don't have time to cook. Well, the packaged processed night. food is also exactly. a problem. Yeah. And so it's not just the sugar, but sugar definitely adds to it. But the packaged processed food definitely is probably making more attention deficit than ever. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is do meal prep. I mean, do your prepping on the weekend, freeze your food, um, have portions froze, have stuff already cooked. Because if you don't, you're gonna grab something out and you're gonna grab fast food, which is the most packaged processed food that you can get. And remember, you know, I don't know, it's been uh, six months ago, maybe longer, who knows? Can't remember, um, maybe something from memory, I guess. But we, we did the show and we talked about um, all the chemicals they found in the, in the actual food supply. Yeah. And it was 140 something of them? Or yeah, they couldn't identify. Well, there's 42 that they could not identify. Yeah. And that was scary. The 150, like, P, that's that's, kind of big, but 42 that they couldn't identify, that's scary. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right, it's Open Line Monday, so call in any question that you might have regarding your health, 896-0713 or 800-349-0713. It's eight minutes after nine o'clock. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's our Monday morning live edition of the Doctor's Nutrition Show, 10 minutes after 9 o'clock, and it's Open Line Monday. So any questions you have regarding anything about health, please feel free to pick up the phone and give us a call. Uh, someone uh, called in and said, what food helps with varicose veins in legs? I, I don't know that there well, is. There's not a specific food. There is. Flavonoids are very good for veins. Mm -hmm. And flavonoids are all the color that's in your fruits and vegetables especially the brighter, brighter colors, yeah, especially are usually the have the flavonoids. Reds um, and yellows. Reds, yellows, oranges, yeah, things yeah. like that. And even onions have quercetin, mm -hmm. and that's a flavonoid. But there are supplements that you can do for varicose veins. Um, one of the ones we probably use the most is called Diavask. And on Diavask, it actually is a, it's diosamine and the Hesperin methylcalcone, which are in the flavonoid family but it is even used in Europe as a prescription drug for varicose veins and hemorrhoids. Right, and then now, in here, South America it, as well. Right, and here, of course, it's not because it's a natural substance, so it is a supplement. And we get really good results with that. We also, butcher's broom, a lot of people have heard of that, which is actually one of the herbs that's used for varicose veins. And we have a product that it's veritonin, um, something like that. I mean, sometimes Close. these names are, yeah. Close. And it actually is butcher's broom with other nutrients as right. well for veins. Yeah. That's why it's called Vera for veins. So um, that we have a couple things that you can take that help varicose veins and you're gonna get a higher concentration of the stuff in those as opposed to food, but in foods, bright colors. Yeah, and you know, and, and that's uh, back to, you're talking about the food supply today. Most people don't eat enough of these bright colored foods. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your, your vegetables, fruits, and so on that, that have these colors in them. Yeah. They just don't eat enough. I would prefer to, you know, as far as cooking, I prefer to cook with uh, either red or yellow bell peppers mm -hmm. and then the green ones. You're, you're, well, you're getting a different uh, flavonoid compound. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. goes better with my Mediterranean pasta. There you go. Uh, how much aloe vera should be used for nail fungus? I think somebody has misunderstood when we said what we use for nail fungus. It is olive ear. 
which aloe vera is not aloe vera. Yeah. Because aloe vera is not necessarily for nail fungus. Um, the aloe vera will use six a day. And just like it takes time for nail fungus, probably up to six months. Yeah, wow. So and it is not like you take it and it instantly goes away. <coughs> now, what, well, let's tell them what that is. It's O L I V I R, right. olive oil. Now, olive oil is an extract of the leaf of the olive tree. So. Yep, so it's not an aloe vera yeah. at all, but I have a lot of people when I say it think that's what I'm saying. So. She, she's <laughs> got that distinct Biloxi accent. <laughs> well, that's where I grew up. Uh, what food should I avoid to lose belly fat? Okay. Biggest one is probably sugar or anything that tastes sweet. Okay, that's because you're getting fructose. And fructose is the number one killer in that respect. But uh, basically sugars, obviously. You know, we've talked about this before several times on the show. Go back 100 years. And the average American back then consumed somewhere around five, maybe six pounds of sugar per year, per year. Now it's 150 or better. Yeah, go to, I'll tell you what you do. Go to the grocery store and get those 10 pound bags of sugar and put a hundred, put enough, put 15 of them in your buggy and try to push that stupid buggy around. That thing weighs a ton. Okay, you know, that's 150 pounds and that's what the average American is consuming nowadays. That's yeah. a lot of sugar. And also there was a study that you were just telling me about, um, about they were come out with artificial sweeteners yeah. and how it long term increases belly fat. Yeah. So it was talking about belly fat and how artificial sweeteners, and we tell people all the time not to do artificial sweeteners. And just no. recently, it's been coming out all over the internet about, I mean, we've told people for years not to do the sucralose. And they have now saying it changes DNA. So it is definitely um, not good to do. Aspartame was, yeah. I think, the one that you, the article That's you were telling one, me yeah. about was the one that they were talking about. Aspartame, aspartame. saccharin. But in saccharin. So don't do artificial sweeteners either. Yeah, I mean, it, it, even sucralose. And a lot of people say, well, that's sugar. Yeah, it was at one time yeah. sugar. But it's been modified heavily. Because what you did is you take all the good stuff out of sugar which, and, and you put in chlorine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> go take some water out of your pool and say, mm, that tastes pretty good. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, you're getting a lot of chlorine there, folks. You don't need it. So you could probably use that stuff to chlorinate your pool. I mean, seriously, it's that, yeah. it's that heavily chlorinated. We don't need to be eating that kind of stuff. No. I mean, that's, no. Nah. Wow. Uh, another caller with a question. What foods or diet is good for IBS or irritable bowel syndrome? Well, for IBS, now there's a couple, I mean, the best yeah. thing to do for IBS is to do a food allergy test. Yeah. And know exactly which foods you shouldn't eat for you. But if you can't do that, because the food allergy test is not inexpensive, it's actually 450, but it does both reactions, both acute reactions, which is IgE, and it actually does sensitivities, which is IgG. But if you're just gonna go buy a diet, it'd be the FOD, FODMAP diet. F-O-D-M-A-P. F-O-D-M-A-P. Yeah. And you can look it up and it'll tell you which foods are good and which foods are bad. So I have had people that do that, that do okay with IBS. But to get more specific, we do recommend doing food allergy testing. But I mean, you, you can go, you can Google FODMAP, F-O-D-M-A-P, yep. and when you Google that, and you and most people do it, and they'll come back to, I can't do that. Yeah. Oh my God, there's nothing to eat. Well, there's not well, there, a lot. Well, I'll is. be, I'll, I'll admit is. it. There's not a lot. Not too okay. Bad. Um, but on the one, the, the list I like, because there's tons of lists out there. It's actually, I believe, IBS.org. Yeah. Um, so the IBS.org has a FODMAP diet. Yeah. And that's the one I usually print out for people and have them go by yeah. if they can't do the food allergy test. Yeah. All right. 16 minutes after nine o'clock. What can I do for Crohn's disease? Cro yep. Well, Crohn's <laughs> is another intestinal it's, problem. It's another thing that you, we typically, when you start talking about Crohn's or any of those inflammatory bowel problems, we go back to the, start with the food allergy thing because foods right. are a lot of foods and people don't realize a lot of foods that she might be able to eat. I can't, or vice versa. And it might be a food that is actually good for you. Could very well be. Um, yeah. You do your testing, it might show that something like broccoli is an allergy. Or, I mean, we've definitely seen people say, oh my gosh, I've been eating that all the time because I thought it was good for you. Well, for most people it might be, but yep. for you it might not be. Now for Crohn's, one thing we definitely do is it has to be, again, if you can't do the food allergy test, you got to be gluten-free. Got to be. Completely gluten-free. And we usually suggest dairy at the same time. Yep dairy and gluten, but we have a supplement called GI Essentials 
that works really good for healing the lining of the, the gut yeah. and the intestines. And Crohn's, it can get like raw meat in there yeah. um, with the inflammatory process. Yeah. There is another supplement we use called SPM. Got a lot of research on inflammation in the, in the intestines. And actually, the, it, well actually inflammation anywhere. But the SPM is really good for Crohn's as well. And like I said, so is the, um, the GI essentials. Hmm. Okay. Uh, 17 after 9 o'clock, our phone lines are open at 896-0713 or 800-349-0713. It is Open Line Monday, so any questions you might have regarding your health, please feel free to pick up the phone and give us a call. We will take a break and we'll be back with a few more questions and this week's special. And welcome back to our final segment. It's uh, 20 minutes after 9 o'clock on this Monday morning. And let's go ahead and check out what this week's special is. Yeah, it's something called Telomere Pro. Now, Telomere, okay, some people may be read about them. It's sort of like the, think of it as the little cap that's on the end of your shoelace that keeps your shoelaces from unraveling. Well, a telomere is on the end of your DNA and it keeps it from unraveling. And Telomere Pro is something, it's, it's an extract of astragalus mm -hmm. and it's called a cycloastragalus. And it actually keeps those telomeres, actually makes them grow longer. So it protects it because when they get too short and too, you know, then boom, your DNA is done. So yeah, that's good. what one of the things that really increases aging is shortening of the telomeres. Right. So if you can keep your telomeres from shortening, you can actually help with aging. Ah. So that's kind of, and astragalus itself is known to help the immune system. Oh, definitely. So that's kind of one of the, but it is an extract, a specific extract of astragalus, mm -hmm. not just astragalus. Right. So the Telomere Pro is just really good for anti-aging. Definitely. Another question, uh, my grandmother has ulcerative colitis. What can she do to help? Well, you know, pro, uh, back to this, sort of like the Crohn's thing. Normally, one of the first things that we recommend for somebody with UC uh, is to go ahead and do that food allergy testing because you're not going to figure it out by yourself. I promise you because you get, your gut gets inflamed and you say, okay, well, it might have been this food. Well, then you try a different food the next day or two and it's, it aggravates you. You say, you think, okay, it's bad. It may not be because your gut's still inflamed from whatever you ate two days beforehand. So do the food allergy and sensitivity testing because there's a difference between an allergy and a sensitivity. And a lot of the medical profession tends to say that, oh, if it's not an allergy, it doesn't exist. Bull, if they've got a problem with it, they'll figure out real quick, it exists. Because those sensitivities can really crank up and cause you yep. all kind of problems. Mm. And then I'm, the GI essentials I keep talking about, yep. um, it is specifically made to heal the linings of the stomach and intestines, especially ulcers. Mm -hmm. So it actually heals ulcerations. It has special kind of zinc, zinc carnosine, that is known right. to actually help with ulcers. Right. So it is put together for healing ulcers and coating the stomach and intestines to keep down the irritation. Mm -hmm. And so that is definitely something else I would do with ulcerative colitis. Definitely. Okay. I had to go online and check out that uh, FODMAP. And, <laughs> um, and there's actually some good food on here. Oh, chicken yeah. parm meatballs, chicken parmesan, uh, gluten-free spaghetti and meatballs, vegetable lasagna. Yeah. So uh, well, that's just recipes. That's um, just recipes. They give you a list of which yeah. foods to stay away from, and, and yeah. usually gluten is very gluten is very inflammatory for everything. Yeah. Um, it is not good for any of the intestinal problems. No. Not good for any autoimmune problems. Mm. It is known as an inflammatory food. Yeah. Um, or compound, I guess you'd say, because it's not itself a food. You don't just yeah. eat it. But anyway. All right. Yep. Uh, another question from a viewer is local honey a good sweetener? Well, well, I mean, <laughs> it still has a sugar value. Yeah. Um, thing is, is now it's not as bad as sugar. And if you're going to do honey, it is definitely better to be local mm -hmm. because then it can help your allergies as well because it has the pollens from the area, which can desensitize your body to the allergens. Right. So of course, local honey is definitely better. But if you are like diabetic, you probably still shouldn't be doing a lot of honey. Honey is still sugar and its glycemic index is about 70 to where sugar is about 100. Yeah. So the higher, the, the worse it is. So it's still 70, still a little high on the scale, but it is better than sugar. Yeah. All right. Uh, I've suddenly started gaining weight and, um, but I haven't changed my diet or anything. Could I have a thyroid problem? Oh, oh, definitely. definitely. You could. I mean, um, it doesn't guarantee it. Doesn't mean it, but, you yeah. are, because you don't know how many people come in and I need my <laughs> thyroid checked. I've gained weight. And I've gained five pounds. And their thyroid's perfect. <laughs> um, so it is not just thyroid. Hmm. Corti cortisol, we're seeing a huge increase 
across yeah. the board from what everybody used to be, and that's your stress hormone. Yep. Stress can definitely make weight gain. Stress can actually turn you diabetic. So mm -hmm. it actually can do a lot of things to you. So that's why our panels all check four different tests on thyroid. It checks the stress hormone. So, and even our expanded thyroid panel, which is just thyroid, adds a cortisol because they mimic such the same symptoms. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what helps with weight loss if you are not physically active? Watch your much eat. Oh, yeah, you're, you're limited, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, you kind of painted yourself in a corner there, and you're limited as to what you can do. The only thing you can do is it's about food intake at that point. Changing your diet. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's about the type of food that you eat and the quantity. Right. And we you always want, say that. Yeah. You want lower amounts of food yeah. of any of it. And then you definitely want to get rid of the packaged processed foods. Mm -hmm. If you go to a real food diet, get rid of packaged processed, get rid of all the sugar, and that alone will help you. Yeah. You know, and, and one of the things about that, you know, the, the one thing that's come out of all the research, and geez, we spent a, a bazillion bucks on it, you know, over the years. The one thing that has shown to increase longevity, caloric restriction, eating less. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, another question from a viewer: What foods are best for Parkinson's disease? You know, foods that are high in probiotics. I yeah. would definitely say. They do. Um, but a lot of fermented time, foods. Yeah, your fermented foods. And but Parkinson's, there's a lot of different things involved in Parkinson's, oh, yeah. and everybody's is different. You absolutely should be on no packaged processed food, none. And because Parkinson's is, is degenerative. Yeah and it also can increase dementias and it can i mean parkinson's has a lot of aspects to it so what we do in when somebody comes in with parkinson's is we do the food the, the, the full testing we actually look at the test and see where your deficits are what what nutrients you're deficient in things like that but probiotics definitely they say have a link with parkinson's mm -hmm. um and but there's a lot of things when you start talking about neurological yep because it's a, basically a, neuro, a degenerative neurological problem. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, can cellulose? I think it's cellulose. So, cellulose be a risk think. of overweight. Now, yeah. What? Yeah. Well, can cellulose be? Here's the problem, and, and there's been a lot of controversy about this over the years. Got to eat fiber. Um, actually, what they're saying now is, yeah, you got to watch those fermentable fibers, and cellulose is a fermentable fiber. So, in other words, you eat it, and your body can actually break cellulose down. And then it can use it for other things because it is a carbohydrate. So it is part of the carbohydrate family. And yeah, it can be, if you're overweight, yeah, they, they, a lot of the, the gurus in the business now, so to speak, and, and one, uh, Dr. Westman up at uh, uh, Duke University, he's saying, whoa, 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 forget this diet uh, stuff about the, uh, especially the fermentable fibers. Now you can get the unfermentable fibers or non-fermentable and they don't ferment, they don't break down. Our body says, gotta get rid of this stuff. And that's okay, but the fermentable, yeah, not too good. Mm, okay, all right. Okay, well, um, that pretty much wraps it up. Yeah, pretty okay. much. Well, we appreciate everybody with all your questions this morning. Uh, we will be back next one, uh, Monday morning for next month. We yeah. Are gonna, <laughs> yep. We, we're going to be talking about understanding your lipids, which lipids are your mm. cholesterol, mm. your triglycerides, and the breakdown of those, and okay. how to how to look at it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Understanding lipids. So uh, yeah. look it up and uh, have your questions ready for us. Again, we'll be back live for another uh, Monday morning live edition of the Doctor's Nutrition Show next Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Have yourself a great day. Be sure you stay hydrated out there if you're going to be out in this heat today. Take care. For more information on highlighting your business and services on Healthy Living South Mississippi, contact Jim Tabor at 896-1313.